Question 9. How many ways are there from getting from A to C in each diagram, passing through each point at most once? So there are a couple of ways of doing this, and the long way, which I don't recommend, would be to actually count them individually. So for example, 1, 2, 3, and so on. But rather than doing that, what we can do is we can add up how many ways there are to get to each node. That is to say, how many ways to go from A to B and from B to C. So if to go from A to B, there are one, two, three, four, five ways. And to go from B to C, there are one, two, three ways. So if I want to find the total number of paths there are, I just need to multiply those two numbers together. So five times three would get us to 15. So there's 15 ways to get from a to C in the first diagram. Now for diagram two, same idea. So to go from A to B1, it looks like there's three ways to do that. To go from A to B2, there are three ways to do that. From B1 to C, we have three ways. And then from B2 to C, there are two ways. So what we need to do now, seeing as there's multiple paths to get from A to C, in that we don't need to pass by B1 or B2, it's just one of them, not both. So I'm going to deal with the top node first. So to go from A to C, passing through B1. So to do that, there's three individual ways, so I'm gonna multiply those together. Now I'm going to now deal the same way, going from A to C, but this time through B2. This time there's three ways to go from A to B2, but only two ways to go from B2 to C. And seeing as I have two different paths to get from A to C, either passing through B1 or B2, I need to add those calculations together. So three times three is nine, three times two is six, and nine plus six gets us to 15. So once again, there are 15 ways to get from A to C, passing through either B1, or B2. So now for diagram three, same idea. So to go from A to B1, there's only one way to do that. To go from A to B2, we have two ways to do that. One of them branches off, but once again, if I'm just looking at individual ways to get there, to go from A to B2, we have one way, we have two ways. Now to go from A to B3, there are three ways to do that. One, two, and three. So now passing from B1 to C, we have three ways to do that. From B2 to C, there's only one way. And from B3 to C, we have two total ways. So now what I need to do once again is to figure out how many ways there are to get from A to C, but going through each path. So from A to B1, we just have one way. And then from B1 to C, there are three ways. So we're going to multiply those together. Now from A to B2, there are two ways. And from B2 to C, there is one way. And finally, from A to B3, there are three ways. And from B3 to C, there are two ways. So once again, remember that we're multiplying to go from one to the next. But when we have all those individual possibilities to find the total number, that's where we need to add. So we have one times three, which is three, two times one, which is two, three times two, which is six, and then I can add these up. Three plus two is five, and five plus six is 11. So in total, there would be 11 ways to go from A to C, passing through B1, B2, or B3.